Praise God. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hmm. It's time to praise God. Hmm. Favor. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm? Ha. Hallelujah. Ha. Hallelujah. God is worthy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. God with me is worthy. Hallelujah. to be praised. I feel like jumping. When I'm in the presence of God, I don't know how I feel. I, re I feel like jumping right now. I feel like jumping. Hi, hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Hmm. Eliana Jojo, you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Sister, I saw her. You are welcome. You are all welcome. You are all welcome. You are all welcome. Happy Sunday to you all. Happy Sunday to you all. This today is a wonderful Sunday. Besides, it's a, it's a Palm Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. We thank God for the grace of God that is upon our life. Today is a deed, a special day, it's a special day. We thank God for everything. We thank God for everything. We appreciate God for life. We are alive today is because of Him. We are where we are today is because of Him. So we appreciate Him. For He alone is worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching from. I bring greeting from you from the high from the most high God. And I hope you all are safe. 
I believe that you all are saved. Your families, your children, your husband and wife, they are all saved. God bless you all. As you have come to join to the program, as you have come to listen to the word of God this afternoon, I tell you, don't just listen to the word, but I want you to be the doers of the word so that at the last day you have the reason to rejoice. You have the reason to rejoice. Our Lord is good all the time, and all the time the Lord is good. Once again, you are all welcome. But before we go into to this um, meeting, let us, op- first of all, pray. Let's pray that God should take absolute control, because we have no power of our own. We can do nothing without him. He is the reason why we are alive. He is the reason for this season. So therefore, let us appreciate him. Wherever you are watching from, I want you to open your mouth and begin to thank him. Appreciate him in your life. Appreciate him in the life of your children. Appreciate the life of your husband, the life of your wife. Begin just to begin to appreciate him. Refrain, just begin to reference him. Appreciate him, give him glory, give him honor. Appreciate him for who he is, for he alone is worthy. He's worthy to be adored. He's worthy to be praised. There is none like him. There is none to compare out to him. Begin to appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him for the new day. Appreciate him for you to sleep and wake up. It is a testimony already. Appreciate it because when you were sleeping last night, you don't even know where you were. But here you are. You wake up in good health. Appreciate the most side in your life. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, El Shaddai. Thank you, Elohim. For you alone is worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> That's going to pray. I want to ask God for his mercy. That the mercy of God will speak for us. As the message of God, the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us. We are going to ask for his mercy, 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 mercy. Let the mercy of the Almighty God begin to speak in our life. Let the mercy of God begin to speak in our home. Open your mouth and begin to ask for his mercy. Ask for his mercy. We are not destroyed because of his mercy. We are alive is because of his mercy. Open your mouth, begin to ask that same mercy to continually to keep you alive. That the mercy of God to continually to speak for you. In the name of Jesus, Father, let your mercy speak in my life. Let your mercy speak in my home. Let your mercy speak in the life of my husband. Let your mercy speak in the life of our children. In the mighty name of Jesus, all we plead is your mercy. All we ask is your mercy. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your mercy. No, pull your mouth. Begin to ask for God's mercy upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We are still praying. We are still in the mood of prayer. That I'm going to tell God that all that we are going to hear today, all that we are going to hear, the word we are to hear, everything that we are going to do right now, that the Almighty God will come and take absolute control. That God should have His way. That God should give us understanding of His word. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Commit all that we are going to do here into the hands of God. Father, we ask, come and take dominion. Come and take charge. Come and take absolute control of all that we are going to do here tonight, to this afternoon. Father, come and have your way. Manifest yourself through your word in the mighty name of Jesus. As we are going to hear your word, Lord Jesus, open our eyes. Let there be a revelation in the mighty name of Jesus through your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, manifest yourself. Reign and dwell in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask for your glory to descend from above at this hour. In the mighty name of Jesus, all we ask is you. All we ask is you. From the beginning to the end, Father, have your way and take absolute control. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. Let your name and your name alone be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord Almighty, I thank you and I bless your name. 
I give you glory. I give you honor for who you are. Father in heaven, as we are about to start right now, we ask for your presence. We ask for your anointing. We ask for your fire. As many that will hear the sound of my voice and ask, Lord Jesus, may you meet each and every one of them to the point of all their needs. As they are about to hear your word, Lord Jesus, may your word begin to manifest in their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Today, today topic we are going to do, look at, take a look at. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. That is the topic of today. In anything that we are doing, we need to seek first the kingdom of God. We need to put God first in everything that we are doing. Let us remember that this place that we are, we are a visitor. That is why we don't need to live anyhow. That is why we need to focus in the things of heaven. Because why? Tomorrow may be too late for us. So I come to tell you this afternoon. That you see, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the, the kingdom of God. The Bible said that. For God so loved the world. John 3 says, For God so loved the world, He gave it only be God His Son. Only be God His Son. That is love. Because of the love that God has for us, He gave out His Son to come and die. Even the Bible says, Even when we are yet a sinner, He came to die for us. What a mighty God that we serve. What a lovely Father that we have. But here we are. He sought of us to go back and serve that same God. He said of us to go back and seek Him. We refuse. We refuse. We refuse. This is somebody, this is a man that gave his life for us. This is a person that gave, a, gave his life for us. The Bible said that Jesus knows no sin. He knows no sin, but he came because of me and you. All he's asking is for us to worship him. All he's asking is for us to live a righteous life. All he's asking, because, he's, because our soul is so important to him. That is why he's telling us to seek him first. Seek him first. Seek him first. Seek him first, the kingdom of God. Seek him. If I told you I do it anything, I am not saying that you will not go to your door to day life or business or work that you are doing. No, I didn't say that. But all I am saying, you as a person need to make a difference. Are you doing, are you a businessman or a businesswoman? Or are you working? What is it? What, 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 what are you doing? Whatsoever that you are doing, all I'm asking you is that make a difference. Make a difference out of everything that you are doing. Be different in attitude. Be different in character. Be different in everything that you are doing. You need to be different. The people of the people have the need to see Christ in you. The people that, because I told you that there are many people, even as you are, many people out there looking up to you. There are people looking up to you. There are people depending on you. So when you are, the, the, the kind of life that you live affects the people that is around you. The kind of life, the kind of attitude that you put up, it affects the people that is around you. That is why in anything that you are doing, you need to be very, very conscious. As a Christian, as a Christian, you need to be very, very conscious. Hallelujah. Make the kingdom of God a priority. Make it a priority in everything that you are doing. Let it be your, prim prim your, primary, your primary thing in your life. Thinking about heaven. Thinking about heaven. When you know that one day, a day, a day, a day will come. A day will come when all of us, we, we just... We will pass by. We will just go. We we'll go and meet our heavenly father. A day will come. When that day comes, where are you going? That is what is important. The truth is that what is important to me is for you to be saved. For me to be saved. If for your soul to be saved. That is what is important to me. I want each and every one of us to be saved on that last day. 
I want each and every one of us to be saved on that last day. Forget the things that you see here on earth. They are not going to take you to heaven. None of these things is going to take you to heaven. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Look at what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 said, For, for after all these things, sorry, 33, it said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. The Bible said that the thing that you are pursuing outside, the thing that make you not to serve God, the Bible is telling you, so seek him first. Put God first. It's all these things. All these things will be added. It will be added. It will be added. All these things will be added. First of all, you first of all seek him. You seek him and his righteousness. Seek God's righteousness. Seek the kingdom of God. And every other thing that you need shall be added unto you. God just wants you to serve him. God just wants you to re recognize that he is the creator of heaven. And he is the owner of your soul. Stop worrying yourself for nothing. All this thing that you are struggling to have to do to get to that is not going to take you to heaven. It's not going to take you to heaven. The truth is that vanity not of vanity, all is vanity. Oh, is everything that you are struggle to have, you are struggle to get today. At the end, it is vanity. It's going to be a pity when you suffer here on earth, and at the last day, you will see continue suffering. That is going to be a pity. It's going to be bad. It is. It is. It is good for you to suffer here on earth, endure, be patient here on earth, and at the end, you will make heaven. That is what is important. You will make heaven. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, in everything that you are doing, you need to put God first. There is a need for you to put God first. There is a need for you to go out there, preach the gospel to others. There is a need for you to obey the, the, the voice of God. God is calling. God is at your door knocking. God is looking for who will serve him. God is, God is looking for those that will serve him in spirit and in truth. God is looking for them. And here, me and you, we are here doing nothing. We need to serve God because he himself was the one that came. He came before, he came even when we are yet a sinner to give his life to us. So why are we, why are we not taking that love back to him? Rather, we are laying back Jesus at the cross. Every day, we do it every day. We do it every day. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs. Our Lord is good. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Amen. I read number 17. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. Hallelujah. This is the word of God. The Bible says, I love those. I love those who love me. Do you love God? Do you love God? He said, I love those that love me. Do you love God? Do you have that feeling for God? Do you know that God is the beginning and the end? Do you know that God is your creator? Do you know that God is the reason why you are alive? Do you know that you, you are where you are today is God? Do you know? He said, I love those that love me. I love those that love me. He said, when they seek me diligently, when you seek him, he said, you will find him. So there is a need for us to seek him. There is a need for us to seek this God. There is a need for us to go out there and look for this God. Yes, there is a need for that. We need to seek him. We need to seek him. We need to know who he is. We need to have this personal relationship with God. We need to have this personal relationship with God. We need to know him more. There is a need for you to know the God that you are serving. Because many of us, we are comfortable to call ourselves a Christian. Why we don't really know this God? 
We don't know what God is capable of doing. When we know who God is, when we know what God is capable of doing, we will not be looking outside. Many of us, we are where we are today because of greed. We are where we are today is because of greed, pride. Because many of us want to follow that, that, that we want to be, be among, let me use the word, be, we want to be among, we want people to recognize us in a society. Therefore, we now decide to sell our soul to the devil. We decide to sell our soul out. We decide to, do, we decide to so, we sell our soul to the devil. Brethren, there is a need for us to come back to God. The time that we are now, is a, it, it, we still have a little time. You still have time. And the time is now, not tomorrow, but now. The truth is that we are in... Is, is, the time is already 11 o'clock. It's already 11 o'clock. By the time it's 12, it's going to be too late for you. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is very close. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is very close. Very, very close. Very, very close. That is the, that is the reason why we should stand up and seek Him. We should stand up and seek Him. And seek Him. Not just to seek Him. Seek Him. In spirit and in truth, love him. Know what he's capable of. The time of greed is the time of greed has passed. The time of pride has passed. That is not the time now. Drop your pride. Drop your greedy. Let what you have be enough for you. The truth is that when you have Jesus, you actually have everything. When you have Jesus. When you take Jesus first, when you put Jesus first, you actually have everything. You have everything. You have everything if you have Jesus. So therefore, there is a need for you to come back to God. There is a need for you to come back to God. There is a need for you to come back to God. God is waiting, waiting patiently for you to come. Hallelujah. God is waiting patiently for you to come. Quickly turn with you to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy, chapter 4. Amen. Deuteronomy, chapter 4. Then I read number 28 to 29. Amen. He said, I dare you will serve God's, the work of men, the work of men hand, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, or nor smell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody see, look at what the Bible says. He said, I dare you will serve God's, the work of men, Hands, the work of men hands, wood and stone, which neither see, which neither hear, nor eat, nor smell. Look at number 29. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him, if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Hallelujah. If you seek God with all your heart, with all your soul, he said, you will find him. Because so many of us, we are serving what we don't know. We are serving what, when the Bible makes us to understand, all power belongs to him. So why do you reduce yourself so low? Why do you bring yourself so low to begin to serve what you don't know? You begin to serve what the man made of men. You begin to serve wood. You begin to serve stone. This is not a time for you to do that. This is not a time for you to look outside. This is a time for you to look unto God. This is a time for you to call upon Jehovah. This is a time for you to come back to him. And he is ready. He said in his word, if you seek me with all your hearts, <coughs> With all your heart, with all your soul, you say you will find me. You will find me. That is the word of God. He said, if you seek me, if you seek me with all your heart, with all your soul, you will find me. That is what God is telling you today. 
God is waiting for you to. He said, when you seek him, you with, with all your heart, with all your soul, come back to him. Come back to him because he is the owner of your soul. It is time for you to renounce those things that you think that you are serving. Those things that you think that you depend on. A time will come, they will fail you. <clears throat> They are not the owner of your soul. They are not the owner of your soul. Come back to Jesus. Jesus is the owner of your soul. As I said, it's going to be a pity when on the last day you will suffer here on earth. On the last day you will still continue suffering. God does not want that from you. God does not want anybody to perish. He does not want none of his child, none of his children he wants to perish. But he wants you to have life abundantly. <coughs> God wants you to have life in abundance. God wants you to live from glory to glory. God does not want no, no, any of his children to perish. So this is, this is a time for you to come back to him. Stop serving what you don't know. Stop serving those things that you think that they are protecting you. Stop serving those things that you think they give you, they give you what you desire. They are not going to take you anywhere. Rather, at the end, you will be the one to regret it. Those things will not help you. Those things that you depend on, those things that your heart that, 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 that your heart belongs to will not serve you. It will not save you. The only thing that is going to save you is for you to come back to God. Come back, come back. God is calling you to come back. God is calling you to come back. God is calling you to come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. God is waiting patiently for you. God is waiting patiently for you to come back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Lord is good. All the time and all the time the Lord is good. God is waiting. God is waiting. Talk with me to the book of Psalm. Let's see what the Bible tells us in the book of Psalm. In the book of Psalm 9 chapter 10. Hallelujah. Psalm, Psalm 10, Psalm, 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 Psalm chapter 9, verse 10, we are there, hallelujah, see what the Bible says, and those who know your name will be put, the, oh, those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not forsake those who who seek you. Hallelujah. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God will not give up on you. If you know his name and you put your trust in him, you put your confidence in him, he will not leave you and he will not forsake you. In the time of trouble like this, in this hard time that we are right now, he said, hey, we not leave you nor forsake you. He will not forsake you. Because why? Your trust is in him. Your hope is in him. Even in this hour, even in this season that we are right now, many people are running here and there, but you as a believer, because you know the God that you serve, you need to be, you don't need to be moved. Because why? The Bible said that he will not allow, allow the feet of the righteous to be moved. The Bible said that he will not allow the feet of the righteous to be moved. Therefore, you will not be worried. Do not be scared. Believe and trust in the Lord. Believe and trust in the Lord. Believe and trust in the Lord. When you believe and trust in him, he said he will not forsake you. When you call upon him in the time of trouble, he said he will be with you. He said he will deliver you from the hands of the evil. He has promised. He has promised. So why are you looking at those things that is not going to help you? Why are you looking at those things? The man made God. The, 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 the God that does not eat. The God that does not smell. The God that does not hear. According to where we read, they said that they don't hear, they don't smell, they don't eat. Why do you depend on those gods? Those gods that you know that is not going to take you anywhere. Those gods that you know that is not going to save your soul at the last day. When you have the almighty God. The almighty God that said, come, believe in me, trust in me, then I will not leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Why are you wasting your time, child of God? Why are you wasting your time seeking what does not seek you, looking for what does not look for you? Why are you wasting your time, child of God, looking for those things that does not look for you? Look for God. Look for God. This is only God that will give you eternal life. It is only God that will save your soul. It is only God that will save your soul, child of God. Depends on him. 
Believe in him. Let your confidence be in him. Let your trust be in him. Because why? He said it. He said, when you seek me with all your heart, he said, I will not leave you or not forsake you. In the hard time like this, he will be the one to see you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's able. He's capable. There is nothing too difficult for him to do. All you need to do is for you to believe and trust in him. And when you do, when you do, if there is anything that is above sky, it will be your limits. When you do, it will give you peace. When you do, it will give you everlasting joy. When you do everything that you are looking for outside, it will, be, it will just give it to you. With that, with that, with that you, didn't, you, 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 do, you do not even struggle to have those things. So do not allow the things of this world, the, 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 do not allow the things of this world deny you of the everlasting life. Do not allow the things of this world to take you away for the righteousness of God. Do not allow the things of this world make you not to inherit the kingdom of God. Do not allow it. It's a need for you to let those things go because why? You make them here. When you were coming to this world, you bring nothing. The very day that your mother gave birth to you, you came, you came to this world naked without nothing. And when you are going, you are going back empty. Whether you like it or not, if you like, be a billionaire. At the end, on that day, you are going to go back empty without nothing. Without nothing. So why are you struggling for those things that is not going to give you everlasting life? Why are you struggling for those things that is not going to give you life at the last day? The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says, hell is vanity. Vanity not for vanity. It is vanity. Vanity not for vanity. It is vanity. Everything that you are struggling to have in this earth, at the end, you are going to lose them. You are going to leave them behind because it is vanity. It is vanity. It is vanity. It is vanity. My dear brothers and sisters, the time is now. The time is now for we to come back to God. The time is now for us to realize that Jesus Christ is God. This time is now for us to seek him. The time is now. Tomorrow may be too late, child of God. There may not be tomorrow for you. There may not be tomorrow for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just a pity when I look around what is going on in this world. I will say, I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't understand what is now going on in the, in, the, in, the, in the body of Christ. Many things have gone wrong in the body of Christ. <clears throat> so many things have gone wrong in the body of Christ. There is too much confusion in the body of Christ. But the only thing that will bring you out of from that confusion is for you to carry your Bible by your own self and begin to study the word of God. Do not allow anyone to deceive you anymore because so many of us, we have been deceived. So many of us that call ourselves a believer, Bible scholars, we have been deceived. We refuse to live. We refuse to live our own life. We refuse to carry the word of God and study by our own self. That is why we have been led astray. Hallelujah. This is not a time for somebody to tell you what to do in the sight of God, in the vineyard of God. This is a time for you to wake up and stand and say, yes, I know the God that I'm serving. I know that I'm serving the living God. I do not want anybody to, 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 to lead me anymore. I want the God himself to lead me. Begin to carry your Bible and begin to study the word of God yourself. And as you do that, you begin to see, God will begin to reveal to you. You begin to have the revelation of who this God really is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The time is now. The time is now. The hour is now. Not tomorrow. The hour is now. Wake up, brothers and sisters. Because so many of us that call ourselves believers, we are still sleeping. We are asleep. The body of Christ is sleeping. That is why we are being taken. Where the Bible says we should be vigilant. We should be at alert. Look at what is happening around the world right now. The body of Christ, they were taken on our way. Because why? The, the, the portion of the Bible, when it tells us that we should be vigilant, we should be at alert, we neglect it. We begin to pursue the things of the world. We begin to pursue prosperity. We begin to pursue the, the, the thing that is not going to give us life. That is what we are pursuing. The thing that is going to give us everlasting life, we reject it. We neglect it. Now we are being taken on our way. Everybody is running her task getter. 
Everybody is only here and the child of God. No matter what is going on in the world, don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Believe in your God. Trust in your God. Let your confidence be Him. And at the end, He's going to see you through. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are not a partaker of it. Your children are not a partaker of it. Your husband, your wife are not a partaker of it. Because why? You have Jehovah, you have Jehovah Jireh, you have Jehovah Nisi that is capable to deliver his children from the hands of the captivity, to deliver the children from the hands of the evil one. That Jehovah still liveth. He did it yesterday. He will still do it today. He never changed. He remains the same. Believe and trust in him. Believe and trust in him. Believe and trust in him. He's able. Is able to deliver you. Is able to see you through. Is able. Is able. Is able. There is nothing he cannot do. Forget the things that you are saying. Do not allow the things of the world to distract you. That those ones are distraction. They are distraction. The things of the world, the prosperity of the world, is distraction. It's distraction. As I said, I, I'm, I'm not saying that you should not you should not do your own business. You should not work as normal. Yes, the Bible says he will bless the words of your hand. But you, as a believer, you need to be different. You need to be different. You need to be blessed. Anywhere you go, let the people know that you are Christ. You are you have the Christ like in you. The Christ like character is in you. God is using you. God have be, God glory has to be seen in you. You need to be different in every area you go. In the office, in your business, you just need to be different. You need to be different. You need to be different. Hallelujah. Our God is indeed a good God. Our God is indeed a good God. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Turn with me to the book of, of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Amen. Our God is a really is a deed a good God. We need to put our trust in Him. There is nothing in this world that is not naked. We come here on and naked we will go. So why are we fighting for what is not going to save our soul? There is no need for that, brothers and sisters. There is no need of killing ourselves for nothing. There is no need for fighting ourselves for nothing. There is no need for us to sell our our soul out for nothing. We thought at the end we are not going to get anything. Hallelujah. We are not going to get anything in their tongue. Isaiah 55, I read from chapter 6 to 7. Grab your Bible. As I always say, when you are watching like this, grab your Bible. It's very, very important. Isaiah chapter 6, read, read with me. As I'm reading my own, you are, go on and read your own as well. I read from number, seven, number 6 to 7. It says, seek the Lord where he may be found. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Because at time we, a time will come when you'll be looking for him, you will no longer see him. A time will come, you will be looking for this God, you will no longer see him. Why is he now? Why is he very now? Seek him. When you can find him, seek him. Seek him. Seek him. He said, call, up, call upon him Why he's near. He's very, very close to you. Is at your door knocking at your door according to the book of Revelation. Is your at your door knocking at your door? Open, open the hearts, open your heart for him to come in. As he's very, very near now, he's still very, 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 very close to you. Open the door for him to come in. He says, Look for him when he's very near, where you can still find him. Because as I said, a time will come, you begin to look for this God, you will no longer find him. Why? Because it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. I don't want you to be taken unaware. I don't want us to be taken. That is what I come to tell you today. This is, this is the right time for us to seek him. This is the right time for us to seek God. This is the right time for us to seek God. Hallelujah. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to God and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. What is this that he's trying to tell us? He said, let the wicked one forsake their way. 
Fuck sake your way. Turn away from wickedness. Turn away from wickedness because what is not going to save your soul? It is only God that will say when you seek him, when you turn away from those wicked way on or righteousness, or righteousness, when you turn away, say it's going to have mercy and pardon you. When you have the sincere mind, no matter the sin that you have committed, no matter what you have gone wrong, when you be sincere and come back to him and say, Baba, I am sorry for my sin. I know I have gone wrong. I know I have sinned against you. He say, it will pardon you. It will pardon you. It will pardon you. Abundantly pardon. It will pardon you. It will pardon you. It's not too late now. I don't want it to be too late. That's what I'm telling you because it's not too, it's, the time is right now. Right now, right now, so I'm talking to you now. Is now, is now, brothers and sisters, forsake your wicked ways, forsake them, forsake that thing that you know that is not going to give God glory. Let them go. It's time for you to let those things go out of your life. It is time for you to let those things that does not give God glory. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Stop being wicked. Stop being wicked to one another. Stop being wicked to one another. Why so many of us, our hearts are so dark. If you look at what is happening in the world right now, you will know that this world itself is wicked. We are living in, in a wicked life. But we that call ourselves a believer that's supposed to change, that's supposed to turn things around, we refuse. We refuse. We refuse to turn things around. We refuse to make things easy for others. Rather, we are, we'll be the one to be clapping. To be clapping for, for what is not right in the sight of God. What is not right in the sight of God. So we should forsake our wicked ways. What is that thing that you know that you are doing that does not please God? You know, you know, down, down deep in you, inside your heart, you know the thing that you are doing that does not please God. What is that thing that you are doing that does not please God? What is that thing? Forsake those things. Let those things out of your life. Let them go out of your life because they are not going to save you. They will not save you. They will not save you. The only thing that will save you is Christ. The only thing that will save you is God himself. That is the only, only, only is, the, God is the only way out. God is the only way out. God is the only way out. Come back to Christ, brothers and sisters. Come back to Christ. Forsake your evil ways. Let those things go. Let it go. Let it go because it's not going to take you anywhere. Let it go. Let it go. What is go? If you are being, if you are a liar before, let, let it go. If you are a bite biter, let it go. If you are the one gossiping, let it go. Are you a fornicator? Let it go. Are you serving? Are you, are you serving an adult? Are you an adulterer? Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Are you stealing? Are you an arm robber? Let it go. Anything that you know that it does not please God, let it go. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Now embrace Christ. And God is waiting patient. You, the hand is, is open wide. He opened his hand wide. He's waiting for you to come. So brothers and sisters, it is time for us to let it go. Turn with me to the book of James. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of James. James chapter 4 verse 8. The Bible says, draw, draw near to me. They draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hand, you sinner. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. Mm, 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 mm. mm. Did you see the word of God? Did you, uh, did you read with me? Did you see what the Bible is telling us? Say, come close, draw near to me. When you draw near to God, he said, he will draw close to you. He will draw close. He said, clean your hands from sin. That is to say, when you are a sinner, you cannot please God. The Bible said that there is a prayer of a sinner is an abomination in the ears of God. That is so before you can meet with God, you need to be clean. You need to wash yourself clean. We need, you need to live a righteous life. You may not be perfect, but walk towards perfection. Allow God to perfect you. 
You may not be perfect because, yes, nobody is perfect. That is understanding. But there are things that you know that it does not give God glory. You have been doing one thing for a year. For many years, you are still there. You do not want to turn away from the time. The truth is that repent that the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God. I know what I'm saying. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Repent from those things. Clean yourself from those things. Wash yourself off from those things. And come back to Lord Jesus. And he's able and capable to set you free from that sin from that, sin that you put yourself into. He's able. He's able. He said, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hand from, from sinner. Say, cleanse your hand, you sinner. You sinner, clean off your hands from that sin. Clean off your hands from that sin. Clean off your hands from that sin. And allow God to dwell in you. Allow the almighty God to dwell in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Child of God, this is the right time for you. So come back to God. Obey his voice. God is calling. God is calling. God is calling you. God is calling you. Obey the voice of God. I come back to him. I come back to him. I come back to him. He is able and capable. Seek for his salvation. Seek for his salvation. The time is now. Not tomorrow. The time is now. The time is now. Child of God, the time is now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I appreciate God. We have held the word. And as you have heard the word this afternoon, I pray that the Almighty God will give you to ha the heart to do the right thing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me pray with you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I give you glory. I give you honor. We have heard your word, Lord Jesus. Help us not to be the hearer alone, but the doers of the word. As many of us, Lord Jesus, that have gone astray, Father, help us to come back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God, for you have promised us that you will not leave us nor forsake us. Father, we believe and I will trust in your word. Father, we thank you and I will bless your name. Be thou exalted, be thou magnified. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I go, we are going to pray. I want you to open your mouth and begin to appreciate God for your life. Thank God. Thank God for your life. Thank God for the gift of life that he has given to you. Appreciate him. Appreciate him for the gift of life. Thank God for your children. Thank God for your wife. Thank God for your children, your husband. Appreciate God for the family member in Africa, wherever they are. Appreciate God. Appreciate God. Appreciate God. Appreciate God for your life. Appreciate God for the life of your loved ones, your mother, your father. Begin to appreciate God for their life. Thank God for what God has done for them. Thank God for protection. Thank God for his provision. Thank God for God do not allow you to hear sad news concerning them. Appreciate God for giving them life. Thank God. Thank God. Begin to appreciate God. We appreciate God for everything that he has done. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray. The Bible says in the time of trouble, he will be the one to deliver us. We are going to pray this prayer this afternoon. After you have seek him, after you have recognized him, you are going to pray that Jesus deliver me from the hands of the evil one. Deliver me from trouble. Deliver me from situation. Open your mouth. Begin to ask God to deliver you. Ask God to set you free from the hands of the captivity. Ask God to set you from that captivity. Ask God to set you free from that bondage. Ask God to set you free from that from that place that you are. You find yourself and you are you are wondering how do I find myself here? How do I put myself here? How do I end up here? Begin to ask God to deliver you. He's able. He's able to do that. He's able to set you free. The Bible says, whosoever the Son of Man has set free, he is free and free indeed. Open your mind. Begin to declare the word of God upon your life. Ask God to set you free from that captivity. Ask God to deliver you from the hands of the evil one. Ask God. Ask God. Ask God to help you to turn a new leaf. Ask God to help you to turn a new leaf. Ask God. Ask God to help you to turn a new leaf. To come out from those things that does not please him. Open your mind and begin to ask for his mercy. That the mercies of God will speak in your life. The mercies of God will speak in your home. That the mercies of God will speak in, the, in your family. Open your mind and begin to ask for his mercy. Open your mind and begin to ask for his mercy. Open your mind and begin to ask for his mercy. He's able, he's able, he's able, he's able to do all things. He's able to do all things. He's able to do all things. Father, we need you. Open your mind begin to tell God, Father, that I need you in my life. I need you in my home. I need you in my marriage. I need you in my ministry. Open your mind begin to tell God 
Tell God, tell God, tell God, tell God. The Bible says, say, ask and it shall be given. Open your mind, begin to ask him. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to come into your home, to come into your marriage, to come into the life of your children, to come into the life of your husband. Open your mind and begin to ask him. Ask him, ask him, ask him. Father, come into my life. Come into my life. Ask God to come into your family member, in the life of your loved ones in Nigeria, wherever they are. Ask God to come into your family, your husband's family, your wife's family. You need God. You need God. You can change things in that family. You can change things in that family. Open your mind and begin to ask God to come in. 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 Ask God to take charge. Ask God to take charge. Ask God to take charge of your life. Ask God to take charge of your home. Ask God to take charge of your ministry. Open your mouth. We can do nothing without Him. We can do nothing without Him. We can do nothing without Him. It is only Him that can help us. It is only Him that can see us through. It is only Him that can set us free. Open your mind and begin to declare the word of God upon your life, upon your home, upon your children. In the mighty name of Jesus, upon your wife, upon your husband. In the name of Jesus, upon your family member, wherever they are, begin to declare the word of God upon their life. That God should keep them safe. In this hard time, in this hard time, that God should keep them safe. None of them will be a partaker of this, of this thing that is going on right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not mourn for anyone. You will not shed tears for anyone. Sudden death is far from your family. Premature death is far from your family. In the mighty name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to declare the word of God. You are not a partaker. Your children are not a partaker. Your loved ones are not a partaker. In the mighty name of Jesus, allow God to reign and dwell in your life. Allow God to come in and fight every battle that surrounds your life. Ask God to fight the battle of your destiny. Ask God to fight the battle of the destiny of your children. Ask God to fight the battle of the destiny of your husband, the destiny of your wife. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Ask God to fight for you. Ask God to fight for you. If God is for you, can be against you. Open your mouth begin to invite God, the power of God upon your life, the power of God upon your home, the power of God upon your ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you all adoration for who you are. Be thou exalted, be thou magnified. Let your name and your name alone be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we have prayed, Lord Jehovah, let our prayer be acceptable in your sight. We bring as many that are sick right now into your able hands. We ask for your healing upon their life. As many that have hospital bed, we, we pray for healing upon their life. We pray for the land, oh Lord my God, the land of Italy, the land of Germany. We pray for the wide world. Father, let your healing rest upon the land. Let your healing rest upon the land. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for our country, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, wherever. Father, we pray for every, every four canon of this world. Baba, let your healing begin to take place. Baba, take away the wicked one. Push them out, oh Lord, and let there be peace in the land. Let the peace reign. Let the peace of the Almighty God begin to reign. Let the peace of God begin to reign in your home. Let the peace of God begin to reign in your family. Let the peace of God begin to reign in your ministry. Let the peace of God begin to reign in the life of your children. The peace that passes human understanding, let it reign in your marriage. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you richly. God bless you richly. And I pray the Almighty God will continue to keep you safe. Continue to keep your family safe, your children safe in the mighty name of Jesus. All these things that is happening, you are not a partaker of it. Your children, your wife are not a partaker of it in the name of Jesus. We have seen the beginning, we will see the end of the of everything. The end, we will we, we see the end. The end we never see our they will never see our end. We will be the one to see the end of this virus in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. It is well with you, it is well with your household. God bless you and have a wonderful Sunday. And as I will say, be wise, be wise. Love your husband, love your wife. This is a time for you to come together as one. And as you do that, God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. See, I come your way on Wednesday by the special grace of God. I will be here same time as from 12 o'clock by Wednesday. And as you come, God Almighty will be with you and bless you. God bless you all.